Hello, I'm Andy, and in this video I want to show you how I play Russians and what is a decent build order to get started with the mighty Russian Empire. I want to start this video with a quote and you can try to guess who said that in the comments. The quote is, quantity has a quality all its own. And it perfectly describes the strategy we are going to use for Russians in Age of Empire 3. We don't have the best units, but it doesn't matter because we have so much more than the enemy and it's all powered by the massive amount of map control we are going to get to support our massive army. So it's basically like Russia in real life. To get a bit more specific, we are going to secure the map with blockhouses and de deny the enemy the Huns and we want to spam out as many units as possible, mainly infantry. Outstuff the enemy and force him to take bad fights because at some point he needs to expand and secure some more Huns. And then you want to have your army there and already have some blockhouses there and deny him basically. This strategy is very good against prolonged H2 plays or booms and I have my problems against a good FF or a fast industrial. So for example against Spain, Germany or even Chinese. So let's get into the build order. In H1 you want to gather all the crates and you want to focus food first so you can queue your first three villagers as fast as possible. Right in the first seconds of the game you want to divide your villagers to all the different food crates so you're getting the food out as fast as possible. So each one of the villagers gathers, gathers at one food crate. After you gathered all the resources you want to send your villagers hunting and you want to get out a house and a market. You want to produce villagers until you have 14 villagers and then you have some, usually some idle time in your TC and click up with 14 villagers. For that reason you have to focus on food treasures with your explorer so your idle time is a little bit less. Also if there are herdables on the map don't hesitate to kill them because then the idle time is even less in your TC. So again, talking about treasures, I think food is the most important, so you, so you are fast in H2 and you have less idle time, but you can also obviously if you find wood or XP, so XP if you find it before you send mercantilism, it is basically a wood shipment. So yeah, get the XP treasure before your first shipment, then it's basically a wood treasure and you want to get food and wood treasures in H1 basically. Once you clicked up to H2, you can get almost any treasure, so even coin, because that speeds up your first batch of unit, or it makes it so much smoother and easier to get out the first units. So in a nutshell, get food treasures and make 14 villagers and age up. Use the quartermaster to age up. During age up, you want to send all your villagers to wood until you've gathered 300 wood, so you can make a blockhouse and get hunting dogs upgrade. Send two villagers forward and place the blockhouse in the face of your enemy. So you want to secure at least one or two hunts, but you also want to plant it in his face so he can't move out of, the, out of his base without you seeing it. After you've placed your blockhouse, um, retask all your villagers. So you went, want to send one to three to coin, depending on how much um, coin treasures you've got, and the rest again to food. During age up, you also want to get out one more house. So that should be enough with the mercantilism card and also you want to queue another three villagers. Some variation of this build would be to skip the first three villagers and get out five musketeers earlier but I like to play more economic. About card progression, so in H1 you send mercantilism card which is the wood trickle so it's equ equivalent to two to three villagers gathering wood all the time. So because Russians don't have villager shipment that's the best thing you can send usually. In H2, send a 5 Cossack shipment as soon as you can. So once you hit H2, you want to send a 5 Cossacks and you want to let them pop out at your forward blockhouse. And you also want to queue 5 Musketeers once you can. To get a Steel Chaps upgrade and to continuously to produce Musketeer production, you will need around 4 Villagers and Coin. So usually I'm just going to send the first batch of my Villagers in H2 to the Coin Mine. Gather the 400 wood you get from the age up and you should be able to get the steel traps and some houses. Let your Cossacks arrive at the forward blockhouse and try to get a villager or two with raiding but don't commit your units and avoid unnecessary fights. Remember you want to put on some pressure and see what the enemy is doing, you don't want to kill him outright. So yeah this is basically the name of the strategy, you are just going to um, try to put on some pressure but don't commit to big fights un unless you know you can win. 
This means you're trying to kill it. you're trying to kill his herding villagers, maybe some TPs or something which is exposed on the map. You don't want to fight under his TC until you have at least 50 units. So and even then if you haven't won a fight before, it's probably also a bad idea. So again, the game plan for you to win is um, to secure the hunts and wait until the, en the enemy runs out of hunts and then he has to take bad fights at some point and you are happy if he takes bad fights and then you win the game at some point. Let's quickly talk about card progression. So usually you're sending mercantilism first. This is like almost always the best choice. The second card is also in most builds the five Cossacks. The third card, I usually take Spice Trade. I know that's very greedy of me, but um, I really like the card. So my hunts last longer and my villagers are gathering food faster. But um, you can also take 700 food or four Cossacks or even 13 Strelets, depending on if you want to be aggressive or not. And the fourth card usually is the 700 wood, so you can get out more houses, uh, one more block house to secure the map even more, and also a stable, so you can mix in some Cossacks if he's making too much light infantry. Depending on how the game is going, you can, after the fourth card, after, after the 700 wood, you can send even more crates to get even more units out. And yeah, so usually around the se seventh to eighth, eighth card, will be with the Boyas, so the Boyas gives you a really strong timing attack, so once you have a good mass of units, so maybe so 50 to 100, you can send Boyas and then your Cossacks and your Strelits will be really strong in H2. Also if you want to go up, you can always use the 700 coin um, to go up, and yeah, but with Russia you're not in a hurry to go up, they are pretty good in H2, so you have your skirmisher type unit, and you have your very good melee cavalry and in edge the only thing you really want in edge three are the two falconets so you can do a timing and yeah my idea is usually to just stay prolonged in edge two and get a map control and get some good amount of army and force force him to fight and do some pressure and yeah so go up to edge three at around 10 minutes and maybe put in the finishing blow with my falconets so let's quickly summarize this video or the strategy. With Russians you want to get map control, you want to force your enemy to take bad fights because he has to take the map back at some point and most importantly you want to get a massive amount of army con consisting of infantry and to really get a feeling right of playing Russians you probably have to turn on the Red Alert 3 soundtrack, maybe some Soviet march. But this is just my, my idea on how to play Russia. Obviously you can tune around with your build order a little bit, um, but this should give you some basic ideas on how to get started. Thanks for watching and see you guys around. Bye bye!